Amen, amen, amen. God, we come before you. And we, and we do come in your presence. We thank you for your word that continues to comfort us all the time. Thank you for leading us through this season. We feel your presence every day. And we see the work of your hands every day. So God, thank you. Today as we come to hear your word, we pray that our hearts will be built up, that will be strengthened, that we will have an understanding from the inspiration of this word, an inspiration that will lead us on. Because your word gives us life. So we ask you, Holy Spirit, to speak to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm excited once again to bring God's word to all of you. I want to thank you for following us and following the word of God, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today I have a message for someone out there. God is going to be speaking to someone specific. And God is going to be speaking to you in a very special way. God is going to giving you going to be giving you a personal message. Today I want to talk about a message. God, God has put on my heart. This message is called hidden but not discarded. I'm hidden but not discarded. Possibly someone out there today, you are feeling like uh, you are hidden. You are locked down. You are beginning to arise. And you are beginning, you are beginning to become visible. Visible in your ministry. Visible in your business. Visible in your career. Visible in whatever you were doing before. But possibly in the last one year, you feel like you are becoming more hidden and invisible and invisible and invisible. And I have good news for you. You are not hidden for a purpose and not discarded. You are hidden for personal growth but not discarded. You are hidden for preparation, but you are not discarded. You are still usable. Your church is still usable by God. Your ministry is still usable by God. Your business, once again, will be profitable. Hidden but not discarded. I call this the Kerif experience. And at that Kerif experience. Uh, Elijah felt like he was being hidden at the time of his rising. Let me give you uh, some information behind the Kerif experience. Uh, the Bible talks about to a king in Israel. His name is a King Ahab who ruled Israel from Samaria. 
bamwita umwami Ahabu wayoboye Israeli muri Samaria and obviously king Ahab arrived after a series of a number of other evil kings kandi umwami Ahabu yimye ingoma asimbuye abami benshi bamubanjirije but the bible says that Ahab was more evil than other kings ariko bibiri kavuga ngo Ahabu we yakoze ibyangwa n'Imana kurusha abamubanjirije and the bible says that Ahab was so evil that he took Jezebel the daughter of one of the kings of Sidonia Sidonians Bibiliya ivuga ko Ahabu yabigize nabi cyane agashaka umugore bitagezebeli umukobwa w'umwami wi Sidon He was she was the daughter of the king of Ethabel Yari umukobwa w'umwami wa Ethabel And he, he went in and married this woman Jezebel Ahab. many of us know about Jezebel and Jezebel does not have a good representation within the bible ahabu ahitamo gushaka uwo mukobwa udafite ubuhamya bwiza muri bibilia and these sodanians uh, they worshiped a god called baal Abanye Sidoni bose baramyaga ikigirwa mana bitaga Baal. So I want you to imagine the king of Israel going in to serve Baal and to worship Baal. Namwe ni munyumvira umwami wa Israeli yadukiriye kuramya ibigirwa mana. Some kind of Canaanian king a uh, 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 god. Ni imwe mu mana z'abanya Canaan. Eh during that time the practice of uh, the worship of Baal had gained access even among the religious communities of the Jewish people. Muri cyo gihe gusenga icyo kigirwa mana byahindutse nk'umuco w'imisengere mu bayahudi. Especially around the reign of the judges. Cyane cyane mu mitegekere y'abami. And he, uh, King Ahab promoted it. Hanyuma umwami Ahab we yimye ingoma abiteza imbere. This was an evil time in the land of Israel. Icyo cyari gihe cy'ubusubira nyuma kibi mu butaka bwa Israel. God had warned the children of Israel never to worship the gods of the Canaanites. Imana yari yari hanangirije ubwoko bwa Israel kutazaramya imana z'abanya Canaan. But as usual they were contaminated by the people and the world around them. Ariko nkuko bisanzwe bari baramaze kwanduzwa nandi mu kabazengurutse. So they the worship of this idol God called Baal. Hanyuma imitima yabo ihugukira kuramya icyo kigirwa mana bitaba. So in the middle of this paganism uh, God prepared and called Elijah to become a prophet. Muri cyo gihe cy'ubupagani bwuzuye butyo Imana ihagurutsa Eliya kuba muhanuzi. And Elijah started prophesying to Israel. Eliya rero atangira guhanurira Israeli. He started his ministry. Atangira umurimo we w'Imana. My guess is that possibly he took time to study to prepare himself. Ntekereza ko yafashe umwanya asoma yiga asenga yitegura. He took time to pray to prepare himself. Afata igihe cyo gusenga yitegurira uwo murimo. He studied his ministry to prophesy against Baal that Baal was not the true God and Baal had no power to control rain and prosperity in the land of Israel. Yambara imbaraga nyinshi ahanura avuga ko bara atari imana nyakuri ntigira ubutware kumvura no gutera imbere si imana muyiveho. Because many people considered Baal as a god of fertility, a god of rain. As a result, he was the god of printing. Kubera ko abantu benshi bizeraga ko ari imana yimvura no bukungu hanyuma bakibera ko no burumbuke buturuka kuri yo. And you know how many people get deceived by prosperity. And anything that offers them prosperity can actually become an idol. Kandi kintu cyose cyazanira abantu ubukire cyabahindukira ikigirwa mana. Elijah rises up to say, no, it's only Jehovah who provides rain. Eliya haguruka mu mbaraga ravuga ngo oya Jehovah ni we mana. In fact, later on he proved to them that only Jehovah gives you rainy not bow ndetse arenzara nababwira ati Jehova ni we mana ni nayitanga imvura so let us read uh, the word of god from first kings chapter 17 from verse 1 to 7 with this background reka dusomira ijambo mu bami ba mbere gice cya 17 umurongo wa mbere kiza kuwa 7 now the bible says now elijah the tishbite from tishbe in gilead say to ahab 
Jambo ravuga ngo bukeye Eliya wite shubi umwe mu basuhuke bigeria di asanga ha baramubwira ati As the Lord the God of Israel lives who my soul Ati ndahiye uwiteka imana ya Israel ihoraho There will neither be dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word Yuko nta kime cyangwa imvura bizagwa muri uyu myaka keretse aho nzabitegekera Underline the next few years not months not not weeks not months but years Aya magambo yaceho akarongo ngo imyaka si byumweru sa mezi imyaka in other words, because you've trusted Baal, I'm going to show you that God has power over the rain and for the next years you're going to have a lockdown. Avuga ati mwamenyereye ngo bari niyo yimvura ariko siyo noneho imyaka igiye kuba myinshi muri muri guma mwizuba. There will be a drought. There will be Hazaba hari igiye kizuba. It's going to be a difficult time. Verse 2 says, Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. After he prophesied, God told him, Live here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kerithi ravine east of Jordan. Jambo ramubwira ngo Imana ramubwira ngo va hano ugende werekeje burasirazuba wihisha ruhande rwakageze kitwa Kereti You drink from the brook hanyuma umwe kuri amazi yakogeze And I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there Na hategekeye ibikona ko bizajya bikugiye muri rimitsima Verse 5 Murongo wa gatano So he did what the Lord told him Nuko aragenda agenze uko uwiteka yavuze He went to the Kerithi ravine east of Jordan and stayed there and the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning bread and meat in the evening mm. and he drank from the brook Aja kura kuka jezikereti ahate ganyana yorodani agumayo ibikona bikajayu muza nini mutsima mugoroba na mujitondo Let us break down this text Dekarero yinguru tuigani renezi Verse 17 Murongu watu minakarini Elijah prophesies and he says, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives, not you, no rain for the next years, except at, by, at my word. God is in charge. God is in charge of everything we are seeing. God is still supreme. God is speaking to us. I really believe that in this past year, God has been louder than possibly ever before in our generation. And God is seeking our attention. And God is saying, come on, can you put on the side your idols and stop serving them because those idols are mm. not the ones that bring prosperity to you. I do give you prosperity. And if you are not putting all your idols, I'm going to put them away. I need your attention. Even church buildings can become idols. Ministries can become idols. Businesses can become idols. Sports can become idols. And God says, put them on the side. I need your attention. I'm a God who is in charge of life. You know, many times we pray for open doors. We pray for new rain and new opportunities. But let me tell you, there are times when God chooses to close the doors. There are times when God chooses to take the rain away. Hey, hey. Sometimes for a short time. 
And sometimes for a long time. And God, during that time, is speaking to us. And God, during that time, is calling us to have a deep relationship with him through the word, prayer, and worship. And during that time, God is seeking to direct us. And God is saying, come on, come back and trust me. Trust me for your survival. Trust me for your protection. Trust me for your provision. Trust me for your healing. I am God and I change not. Hands, our God has not changed from creation to this day. Our God is the same through all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the same God through all generations. He's the God of Adam and he's the God of Abraham. He's the God of David and is the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he's the God of all those who believe in him. But he's also God who is in charge of all those who don't believe in him as well. He's the God who is in charge of all those who don't believe in him as well. You can never run away from him. You can never act the way you want to act in such a way that he never gets hold of you. He is God. And he's a God who is in charge of all kingdoms and nations. He sustains us. Now listen to what God told Elijah. And this is very important for all of us to understand and keep in our heart. Because in moments and times like this, God works with his children, with his people, in a very special way. And I really believe that God is working with these people in a very special way. God is working with you, pastor, in a very special way. He's a hidden but not discarded. Brother, sister, in Christ, God God is working with you in a special way. You are hidden, but you are not discarded. One of these days, you are going to rise in power. You are going to rise from where you are hidden to Mount Carmel. From Kerith to Carmel. And you all remember that mountain of Carmel where God put Elijah again on a platform and he answered him by fire. But meanwhile, listen to what God said. First Kings chapter 7 verse 1. The word of the Lord came to him. Said, depart from here. Turn east word. And hide yourself by the brook of Kerith. During moments like this. When God shuts up the heavens. And not you, no rain. And for years, kings and nations call upon God and as if God is not hearing, like there is no answer. As God's children, you need to be careful. 
ugombya kwitonda hano and listen to the voice of god aho ni ho buteza amatwi ngo wumve ijwi ry'Imana neza and obey the word of god hanyuma waryumva ukaryumvira because the word of god will be your survival kuberako ijambo ry'Imana niyo mibereho yawe ibisigaye abanyarwanda bayitamara mu kiro yawe haleluya haleluya the word of god will be your survival ijambo ry'Imana niyo mara muko ubufite that's how you gonna survive aho ni ho bugiye kubaho so god is sent to elijah elijah listened to god imana iramwohereza eliya yumvira imana depart from here avuga ngo uve hano turn eastward very specific uhindukira ugi burasirazuba birasobanutse hide yourself hanyuma wihishe you got to hide yourself for some time hari igihe nkutegekeyeho cyo kwihishaho don't worry I am preparing you for greater ministry. I am preparing a better platform for you. You go hide yourself. Three years from now, I will appear to you. And I'm going to do greater things than ever before. So I call this the Karif experience. A place where God withholds what you wanted the most. Ahantu Imana igundiriye ibyo wifuzaga cyane. So that he can reveal himself to you. Kugira ngo ni mara kubigundira ikwiyereke. Kerif is the place where God closes the closes the door on you for what you wanted from him so that you can get him. Aho hantu kereti na himana igundira ibyo warukeneye kugira ngo noneho wowe uyibone. I give you an example. Ndabaha urugero hano. And before I do friends welcome to Kerif. Some of you may be right now at your Eucharist. Karif comes to every Christian. At some point in your life. I remember about two years ago. We got sent to our Karif. As Africa College of Theology. God closed the doors behind us. And God sent us to our Kerif. A period of two years. Man, we were already launched. And God said, no, wait. Let me take you to Kerif. Let me hide you a little bit. You are not discarded. But let me hide you. Because I want to make you a truly African college. Hallelujah. With a global perspective. And put you in a situation where you can can actually become more attractive to other African students. By giving you double accreditation. Therefore, God took us through a journey of deeper examination. Deeper preparation. Hallelujah. And better equipping. And now we are out of our Kerith. We are on our Mount Camel. In a better position to serve and train redemptive leaders on our continent. Kerith experiences are not easy. Because you doubt yourself. You even start doubting what God told you. But it's very important during that experience. To understand that God is hiding you for a while but not discarding you. Keep listening to him. 
komeza utege imana amatwi you find out through scriptures God hid many of his servants. God hid Joseph in prison before he sent him to a palace. Imana ahishe Yosefu muri gereza mbere yuko ajya mu ngoro y'umwana. God hid Moses in the desert for, for a third of his life before he led him out of Egypt. Imana yahishe Mose mu butayu before God used Moses to lead people out of Egypt, God hid him for nearly a third of his life. Imana yahishe Mose mu butayu mbere yuko ajya kuyobora ugoko bw'Imana abukura muri Egypt. God hid David in the mountains running in and out of the caves from Saul before he was recognized as a king. David na w'Imana yaramuhishe mu misozi no mu buvumo mu ruzerero atarabu mwami. I really believe God is hiding his men and women. Ndabyizera ku Imana irimo guhisha abagabo n'abagore. God has Thousands and thousands and thousands of his men. Imani ftawa gabo ibi humbi ni bi humba jiza ibi chie. And thousands and thousands of his churches. Ibi humbi ni bi humba jiza bi matore ro ibi chie. God has hidden us in this corrupt from this corrupt world. Imana iduhi shemuri no siyandu ircha. And God has not discarded us, but just He hidden us. Harikimana na goya tushugunye ahugira duhi she. God is preparing us for revival. Imani limura du teguri rabga abujuta kwa abuga. God is preparing us for a greater global awakening. Imani limura du teguri rakugu kangu kakuisio. God hid Paul for three years in Arabia. After his conversion. Imana yalat kwa eporo. Ila muhisha. Mwurugu bjaba rabu. Imnya kitatu. Before he became a missionary. Mbire yu kwa hindu kumu missioner. I really believe that. Our biggest challenge today. Is being impatient. Njala nechereza kuchi wazo dufite. Nukui hanga na guche. We want everything right now. When you think through these men and the journeys they undertook to greatness, it took a lot of hiding. 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 At Kerithi, before his great contribution at Mount Carmel. Ahanga harero imana ihishe eria kukajeziki kereti mbere yuko agaragara mumuri mo kome. God has done this again and again. Imani because in shuro nish. I can give you so many examples in my life. Na ba hingero nish kuzi mabganj. I remember when I had to lose a job to be able to actually go into full time ministry. And I was feeling comfortable in my job and making an income and having money in my pocket. And God moved me to not even a simple place. But in the middle of prosperity. But in the middle of prosperity, I had no money. <laughs> and God put me in a position to prepare me for ministry. Where I would see prosperity but have nothing in my pocket and still be comfortable. Let me tell you, God can take you to Kerithi by removing you from your position. Imani shura kugutu kwa richereti ikuvanya mwanya wa yawaruri. God can take you to currency maybe through prolonged sickness. Imani shura kugutu kwa ramu kazi kwa kereti winyuze mwurugwa. God can take you to currency maybe through this pandemic. Imani shura kuduja ni kereti winyuze mwuri chichorezo. A place where God hides you and holds you back from what you want most so that you can get him. Ngo uburi yu wa shaka gachani alikuboni imana kushawo. So friends don't count these days to be strange days when God hides you. Here is the principle. When God chooses to hide you for a time, He is preparing you for a greater purpose. May God bless you as you continue to seek Him. As you continue to surrender to him in this season and time of your preparation. Because we believe 
Everyone has his Kerith. Some of us are Kerith has become our home. Some of us who are used to global traveling, Kerith has become our village. Abandi, Kereti, Ningendo, and Dukola, Kereti, I am Murugu. You know, we've been hidden in different places during this season. Murichino, do his Kohano, Tandu, can you now? At Kerith. Ariconi Kereti. Don't be disappointed. Murikereti, no one would tell you. Kerith. Kereti. Don't doubt yourself. Do you see the Kanye? At Kerith. Don't lose the dream and the vision for greatness. Because God is just preparing you for greatness and for the great things that are about to do in your life. God is preparing a bigger platform for you. God is preparing a bigger business for you. And God is preparing you for a greater ministry. This time a ministry at Carmel. A place where God answers by fire. May God bless you. May God continue to be with you. And may God strengthen your life. And may you stay stable and strong. And because one of these days will be away from Kerith. Elijah Elia, his days of Kerith came to an end. The brook became dry. And his next destination was in the widow's house. And out there, God used him to do great miracles. Let's pray. God, we come before you. Right here at Kerith. We thank you for the great things you've done. We thank you for the great things you're about to do. And we thank you for taking care of us in our circumstances. Our Father, we do ask you to give us patience, to give us grace, and to work in our lives in such a way that we truly know that that we're being equipped Thank you and give you praise. We trust you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.